We're here at the WTSA Expo, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Jay Harry, who is involved in strategy and business development for IBM Research here in India. Jay, thank you for joining me here on the uh, Department of Telecommunications uh, India Telecom stand, which is a very, very large stand here at the uh, WTSA Expo. Um, and we're standing here in front of, it says here, IBM Quantum System 2. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this beautiful uh, piece of technology here. Sure, yeah, yeah. Thank you and welcome to the Dot Pavilion. So this is what you see here is the IBM system, Quantum System 2. This is possibly the latest uh, quantum system in the world from IBM. This is a, basically what you see here is a replica of a quantum chandelier. And this is basically having like a 133 qubit uh, IBM Heron processor. So let's with, go back on that again. How big is that? Under 133 qubit Heron processor. Right, okay. Yeah, so basically, as you know, quantum computing is uh, emerging to kind of to solve some important problems in the world which classical computers cannot do because of the way uh, it mimics the quantum kind of nature. So th things like optimization, understanding, chemistry, molecule, simulation, these are some of the areas quantum computers are expected to do better than what classical computers uh, are able to do at this point of time. So we are happy to be at uh, you know, Dot Pavilion as part of the WTSA here and we are showcasing this quantum IBM quantum system too. And uh, of course, uh, we are participating and partnering as part of the National Quantum Mission in India. IBM has been one of the large player in this country. We have like, we have the IBM Qiskit platform. It's been used by like 75,000 students uh, in the country. Many academic institutions use that and uh, happy to collaborate with the ecosystem here and see how this quantum uh, computing can help India in its growth towards uh, Vixit Bar 2047. Right, so in a nutshell, for those who might be uninitiated, what is quantum computing? Yeah, so quantum computing is, uh, I would say, is a different uh, set of computing, which is based on basically understanding, uh, kind of simulating nature. Like you have typical bits where which can store either zeros or ones, qubits behave such a way they can exist in a state of superposition entanglement they can exist in both zero and one at the same time so that gives capabilities for a quantum computer to solve problems which are not solved in a typical uh, kind of uh, classical computers so uh, like problem sets with you know very uh, large problems like a traveling salesman right if you want to go from a to b what is the shortest uh, path to you know do that even like say if you let's say if you take a ship for example ship uh, if there are 12 ships on a uh, sea floor and if you go from it let's say from mumbai to say uh, new york for example there are multiple locations on the way and if you want to use a classic computer to optimize the complete route it's going to be very difficult for a classical com computer if you have 12, ship, 12 such ships on a on the floor so quantum computing can solve some of these problems in a better way the large optimization problems. And tell us a little bit about the design of this then, because yeah. this is not your standard uh, uh, laptop, <laughs> desktop yeah. or anything this, else. This is, is actually the quantum uh, system too. You see what you see is basically a honeycomb. Uh, you see the top also, it's a honeycomb kind of a design. What you see is like the quantum chandelier. And, uh, and this basically, what you see below is quantum chips are there. And the whole thing is kind of kept uh, like the refrigeration, uh, like a four millikelvin at the end. So it's like uh, temperature as cold as a deep space to help the quantum chip stable. So this chandelier is kind of designed in such a way that you know help uh, you know the cooling and uh, IBM Quantum System Two also won like a design award for the way the whole thing is designed. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now this is a replica of it. This is a replica. We have the actual quantum systems in our Yorktown labs. Is it true to scale? It's kind of a miniature. Uh, a version. miniature. So how big is the actual you, one? You actually, if you see the, there is a video of that. We have a short video which plays around, which shows the actual quantum uh, data center that we have in our US labs. You can actually see that. Because right. Multiple such things combined together, they make the big quantum data center. Now, what difference does it make uh, to, to India, do you think, uh, to have such uh, cutting edge uh, technology here? See, India, I would say, is very, very unique because India is one of the large software kind of uh, player in the world. And we believe the future is going to be around how quantum algorithms, like the way hardware is developing. Similarly, there's going to be advancement in the software side as well. And India, with its prowess in the whole software space, can play a really critical leading 
uh, kind of role here in advance, you know, moving the algorithms for different areas, be it chemistry, be it optimization. So I believe that's where the strength is going to be with a lot of software engineers in the country who are dabbling in AI. I believe now they will combine quantum AI together to make something you know, good for the country and for the world. Fabulous. Well, we wish you all the very best Thank of you. luck. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again very soon. Now, before we go, we're just going to ask one more person to come onto the stand. It's Ajay, also from IBM, who's going to talk to us about quantum safe cryptography. Oh, so, thank you, th Max. thank you very much indeed for, for joining yeah, me. You, so, Max. please tell me a little bit about that because I think it's a very important uh, topic too. All right. So, we looked at various use cases that the quantum computer can solve. One of the use cases it can solve in future is the cryptography. The one that we currently have, cryptography as a standard use across the world, will be broken and hence we will need to find a new solution for the cryptography. And so, we have been working with NIST, the standards body, for the last eight years or so. Uh, they have shortlisted certain algorithms which are quantum safe, which cannot be broken by quantum computers in future. All of them are IBM submissions, by the way, right? So, so we have a deep history in terms of crypt cryptography and we also, as part of our mission for quantum, uh, bringing useful quantum computing to the world as well as make the world quantum safe. So we have got a two line mission for all of the quantum safe cryptography. Apart from the cryptography uh, itself, uh, the application of that cryptography in the real world scenario, uh, that is what IBM has been working on, how to identify your current vulnerabilities, risk elements, and apply the new cryptography to make yourself a quantum safe um, organization. So I think we have been working with government uh, agencies and regulatory bodies, uh, such as even, you know, with IT and otherwise, uh, we will be put, putting up new a new framework and new policies uh, for, for the world to follow as, as part of the standards. Body. Well, one Thank of the things, of course, of course, that ITU does is, is convene uh, all of these meetings, is to get all the various people together in terms of industry, in terms of academia, in terms of research. Um, and we're very pleased to have you on board. Thank you very much indeed right. uh, for, for explaining that to us. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you uh, both again in the very sure. near future. Um, and thanks very much indeed. And if you've enjoyed this interview, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel as well as our podcasts on our podcast channels and for further information visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.